One of the most peaceful spots in the Hollywood Hills is that surrounding Lake Hollywood. Yet at this minute, there is a fierce activity on the shore of the lake which would certainly make a stranger think some weird country was landing machines of war in our very midst. The Euclidean rocket plane, which brought the Gregory Party of Seven and the girl submarine commander safely back to Los Angeles, has been refloated on the surface of the lake. Preparations are underway for an immediate takeoff. Captain Tex Bradford and Elaine, the girl Euclidean commander, are going to make a dash back to Euclidia. Jerry Hall and Joan Gregory are helping them with their last-minute plans. Are you sure you've got everything, Tex? Everything we have time to worry about. The plane does not seem to be buoyant enough to rise from the water. I was wondering about that, Joan. Well, how about it, Elaine? I'm nearly ready, Captain Bradford. The task of driving the water from the outer shell has been slower than usual due to the necessity of watching the rise closely in flooding and then re-raising the ship all from the outside as we have done this time it must be done slowly as the plane could easily leap from the water and float beyond our reach if i admitted too much helium well golly whiskers who ever heard of a leaping plane this rocket ship would do exactly that jerry yeah i guess it would That should be sufficient gas. Will you watch the stern, Captain Bradford? Right, Elaine. It's coming up pretty fast. That will be all. This thing is sure ready to jump into the air now. And we're about ready to jump with it. Captain Bradford. Yes, Joan? I believe we are observed. Huh? Where? On that highway above us. Yes, we are. And that means we'd better get out of here quick. We don't want to answer any questions right now. The plane is ready. We can take off now in a matter of 100 seconds. Oh, why so long? That much time will be required to distribute the first charge of fuel to the gas jets. Okay, Lane, turn them on. That car's stopping up there, and a couple of mighty business-like fellows are pouring out of it. The tanks are now charging. Yeah, and these two fellows from the car are charging, too. Oh, Jerry, we are being attacked. Attacked? What do you mean, attack? One of those men is carrying a weapon in a black case. A weapon? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a weapon, all right, Joan, but it isn't very dangerous, except for getting our pictures in the paper. Well, that's bad enough right now. Yes, it is at that. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. You and the skipper pile in and shove off. Joan and I'll get our pictures taken and keep these boys away from you. Excellent plan, Jerry. Come, Captain. Right. Go ahead, Elaine. We'll give the last minute instructions to the kids here. Hurry, Captain. Those men are nearly upon us. You two let them question you all you want to. But don't tell them who you are. Don't give them any information. We've got to have four hours to get back to Euclidia before anyone finds out about it. Hey, they'll get the license number of Mrs. Gregory's car. No, they won't. I took the plates off, and the registration slip is at the house. But well, we're liable to get caught by the cops on the way back to the house. We will be arrested. Possibly. They have a habit of arresting people without license numbers or registration slips. But just to make it sure, Jerry, you might go a little too fast at the wrong time. Oh, I got it. Remind them that they are not to attempt to contact us by radio until we call them. Why is that, Captain? We don't want those Euclidians to know we're on our way. It might make them take chances getting out of that underwater city before we can bottle them up. I got you. Better shove off, Tex. Here they come. Right. Ready, Elaine? Ready. So long, kids. Good luck, Tex. Goodbye, Captain and Elaine. <laughs> Remember, Joan, we don't know what's happening. I couldn't even get set for a picture of that thing. You know best, Jerry. This is a situation entirely strange to me. Me too, but I think I'm going to like it. Hey, you two kids, what's going on here? Oh. Who was that just took off? And where did that flying submarine come from? Oh. How, how should I know? I never saw anything leave so fast but last week's pay. That thing was out of sight before I could get a decent picture of it. Why should you want a picture of it? What do you think? Jerry, what do I think? Uh, you think it's none of his business? I think it's none of your business. Say, what is this? We don't know. You just saw that flying dill pickle jump off the briny deep, didn't you? We didn't see anything, did we, Joan? No, Jerry. Wait a minute. I'm beginning to get an idea. Move around where the light's better. I'll try to get you a picture of it so you can prove it to the editor. Save the comedy. I've got an idea who these two are. So have I. They're Jack and Jill. They just come down the hill to fill their little pails of water. Oh, no, we're not. You bet you're not. 
You're Jerry Hall and Joan Gregory. Oh, Jerry. Hold it. You're right, Pete. Sure, I'm right. These are the two kids who just got back from the Magic Island. Why, that thing was blown up by a volcano weeks ago. Oh, no, it wasn't. I had a hunch that volcano story was a phony. Well, go right ahead and have all the hunches you want. We won't tell you a thing. You're Joan Gregory, aren't you? The little girl who was lost 14 years on that island. I, uh, I do not understand you. You're talking to yourself, Pete. Maybe, but I'll bet you two understand this. Captain Tex Bradford just took off from this lake in some sort of a wild flying contraption. He's on his way back to that screwy place you call the Magic Island. He was in a hurry. He didn't want anyone to know what he was doing. That's all the story I need. Come on, Fuzzy. Wait till I take a couple of shots of these two. Okay, but make it snappy. This is one story that'll look better without any of your comic strips. You never wrote a story that could get along without my pictures. One's enough. Come on. Come on, Joan. We've got business. Where, Jerry? I'll tell you after we get going. Uh, don't hurry, you two. You can read this story when you get back home if you take your time. Jerry, that man will ruin everything. Yeah, he might if his story got out in time. Oh, but nothing can prevent that. Well, I've got other ideas. Just get in your mother's car as fast as you can. But they are going to their own car. They will have that story all over the city in a few minutes. Maybe and maybe not. Now hurry up and get into the car and don't stop to argue. Very well, Jerry. Well, I haven't been up and on this road for a couple of years, but if they haven't changed it any, we're all right. Those men are hurrying to their car too, Jerry. They will reach the highway before we do. Maybe not. You watch them and tell me which way they go, and I'll see how quickly I can get us out of this. Jerry, these curves are dangerous. Nothing is dangerous to you, Euclidia. Now take it easy. Well, I will try. Well, just let me drive this car and keep your eyes on those two in the other car. They are going up a winding drive, almost opposite to the direction we have taken. Did they turn to their right as they started up the hill? Yes, they did. Swam. Hang on tight, Joan. We'll see if this car of your mother's is as good as it looks. Jerry, please be careful. Well, we're still on the road. But you go so fast around those turns. Well, those other fellows are going pretty near as fast, only they've got farther to go. Now, if I can beat them to the top of this hill, we're all right. But what good will that do? You'll see when we get there. I mean, if we get there. You are being very foolish, Jerry. Well, sure I am. But Captain Bradford and Elaine are flying a thousand miles an hour trying to get to Euclidia before G-47 knows they're coming. And if these men get that story to their newspapers, it'll be on the radio in half an hour, and G-47 will know all about it. I know that, Jerry, but how can you prevent it? Well, just give me a few seconds to get around this next turn on the top of this hill, and I'll tell you. Oh, Jerry, Jerry. Did you not see that notice at the top of this drive? Oh, sure I saw it. But you are going down a one-way drive. It is wrong to go down this way. Oh, I know it. And I'm going to stop going right in that narrow place just ahead of us. Hang on while I skid this car straight across the road. But that will block the road. I hope you're right, Joan. Hang on tight. Well, we're here. Yes, Jerry, we are here. And we are helplessly stopped. It will not be possible to move this car now. There is no room to go forward or backward. Uh-huh, and if you noticed it, it's going to be mighty hard for another car to get around us, too. That does not better our position. Maybe not, but it won't hurt Captain Bradford's position any. Jerry, you are going to compel that car to stop. You bet I am. Here they come now, and look at their faces. They have seen us. Sure they have, and do they look mad. But what will they do to us? Nothing. I had an accident with a car. It got stuck across the road. And if that keeps a couple of wild men from running to their papers with our story, well, I can't help it. Hey, get that thing out of the way. They are very angry, Jerry. I had an idea they might be. Don't you know this is a one-way road? Never heard of it. Jerry, could they not back their car down and go around the other way? Well, that's what I was afraid of. They do. But luck's on our side now. There's another car coming up behind us. And the people in that other car will be angry also. Oh, guess they will. But if enough cars pile up on this road, we'll manage to keep our friends here for a while. Hey, you two lunkheads, what's the idea? Oh, sorry, mister. 
I guess I started down the wrong road. You know, blame well you did. Well, you can see where I skidded, trying to turn it around and get out of your way. I can see where you skidded all right, but those tire tracks don't say anything about trying to get out of our way. Looks more like you deliberately skidded your car across this road to block it. Oh, no, that's against the law. I wouldn't do anything like that. <laughs> oh, I'll bet you wouldn't. There is another car down there now, Jerry. Yeah. Well, why don't you fellows get your car out of the way so these boys can get past? Why, you young... If I wouldn't like to wring your neck. Huh? Go ahead. No, I'll save the pleasure. Just now I want you to get this car out of here. Well, I can't do that. You know I can't. You going to leave it here all night? Oh, no, no. I'm going to walk to Hollywood and telephone a garage to come and get it with a wrecking truck. Well, they can drag it around on the road. And I suppose the cars that will pile up here on this hill can just pile up and exercise their horns while you and the girlfriend stroll down to Hollywood. Oh, that's right. Jerry, is this not a police officer coming? Hmm, sounds like it. Yeah, it looks like it, too. And when he gets here, you move out of the way. Oh, I don't think he can pull this car out with that motorcycle. Oh, Jerry, what will the officer do to us? I hope he takes us to jail. If he does, we can't phone a garage to come after this car, and our nice friends here can wait a while longer. You're going to get plenty of action, Jerry, my boy, and you're going to get it right now. Uh -huh. 